So hello, welcome to this Pi Data Global 2020 talk entitled I'm Pi Widgets for Education, using Jupyter tools to make math visualization applets for the classroom. My name is Jeremy Tan, um, my pronouns are she, her, and I'll introduce myself in a moment, but let's first establish the point of this talk up front. So as you can see, the point of this talk is basically about more school educators and students, um, the fact that they could be benefiting from adopting Jupyter technologies for teaching and learning, um, because obviously a lot of them don't slash aren't. So focusing here on math education use cases, this talk live codes and math visualization applet as a demonstration of how these tools could add value in school lessons, um, with obviously a lot of different caveats. Um, this talk will particularly showcase iPy widgets as the Jupyter technology enabling um, the front end experience. So just quickly introduce myself to put this talk into context. I am a tech entrepreneur with 13 years experience innovating with data set science technologies. I come from a social science background, um, but I have quite a passion for um, upskilling and outreach. So this is me at uh, the first meetup an Aura meetup that I founded, um, which turned into a, a global organization. Um, and I, in fact, decided to make the move to becoming an edtech startup founder. So I work in the UK, um, democratizing opportunities for school aged children to develop modern computing literacy, which means that um, my sort of work environment um, and my target audience is effectively girls like Hermione from Hogwarts. And I work primarily with secondary girls schools around London, pioneering projects that develop literacy of different elements of the Pi data stack. So let's talk about the power of math visualization. So visualization um, to express mathematical ideas and help solve mathematical problems has a rich history from Euclid's diagrammatic windmill proof to the cubic witch of Agnesi cube um, curve from Maria Agnesi's 18th century calculus compendium and on to more recently um, uh, unfortunately the, the late Mariam Rizikani uh, who is sort of well known for her use of doodling so as she said when thinking about a difficult math problem you don't want to write down all the details, but the process of drawing something helps you somehow to stay connected. So thinking about um, those use cases, there is a, a real possibility for opportunity for Jupiter to be used to visualize math at school. So there are today, many digital tools available for visualizing ideas and concepts, mathematical or otherwise. And actually, when you think about these kind of tools, I would suggest that Jupyter Technologies should be top of this list, obviously, where feasible, because of the professional quality of the software, the fact that it's open source, that there are lower barriers to adoption um, in terms of sort of resources connectivity, technical expertise needed, um, but also that um, there is growing evidence uh, for the effectiveness of Jupyter technologies in education. So, you know, really it's sort of, it's got a really good success rate. And then if we actually think about why the focus, why the need to enable math education specifically, well, so, you know, I don't come from an education background, but, you know, I, th I think it was pretty well known that even before the pandemic, there was a crisis in math education. Um, and, you know, in a lot of countries, Western countries as well. So the US, for example, um, was one of many countries who had been registering persistently low math attainment in secondary education. Um, and of course, now with the global pandemic, um, you know, it's it's really clear that students, I mean, all students have been impacted. Um, and obviously 
some more than others, particularly those who were already disadvantaged or underprivileged, are now facing even greater hurdles. So, for example, as we should say, high school dropout rates could increase. Younger children could miss out on foundational concepts. Um, I suggest they already are missing out on foundational concepts. Um, and then, of course, there's also the mental health side as well. So, you know, I think this is a really uh, important, um, I'd say, area to focus on, uh, you know, adopting potentially impactful technologies. So, okay, with that kind of context, um, let's turn to some of the applet demos uh, and see how secondary school math concepts can be brought to life using Jupyter Technologies. Uh, this is an example I just want to show first of all before we go into the actual app to be live coded. Um, this is a applet which uh, I built to demonstrate basically the Fibonacci sequence in action and some other applied mathematical concepts. So things like recursion, um, trigonometric functions, rotation, um, coordinates, things like that. So this is very much about the art of the possible, but I just want to show you uh, what can be achieved because this is probably at the more advanced end compared to the example that we will live code, which, you know, is um, more for sort of a younger age group um, and is probably more kind of accessible. So this is, um, I've used Walla basically. So uh, a very cool, I think it's really quite new Jupyter technology, which basically turns your Jupyter notebooks into standalone um, web apps. So also very cool. I would recommend you check it out. So what happens basically in this applet is you choose different sort of minimum or starting terms of the Fibonacci sequence, and then it will automatically create really interesting well, I think really cool patterns um, based on random selection of fruit emojis that I've got in a dictionary behind the scenes. So as you can see, <laughs> it's just kind of visually or aesthetically quite appealing, but you know, it does also have um, a lot of mathematical ideas uh, driving it. So, you know, to obviously get the fruits to align and so forth. So anyway, that's a lot of fun. Um, so I'll stop playing with that now. Um, okay, and then let's look at the <coughs> the voila app of the app that we are going to live code. So um, I've designed this to take, for example, percentages, which is part of the, in the UK we call it key stage three. So that's uh, the first three years of secondary school, which is basically 11 to 12, 13, 14. Um, and so it's a simple example, but it also is very short to code as well. So, you know, again, the idea is that you can see what's possible and you could obviously add from build on this kind of foundation to do much more complicated things. So, okay, what you do is as a teacher, maybe as a student, you basically choose different numbers of sports equipment, in this case, balls, or of course, any kind of items. I've chosen a sports theme. So let's say you choose 10 basketballs. So, you know, you ask the question, what is the percentage of basketballs in the bag? Of course, the answer is 100. Let's say we added some tennis balls. And now you see what the percentage of basketballs is, two thirds, of course. Then you ask a question, what proportion of tennis balls, uh, what proportion of the bag, items of the bag or tennis balls, which would be a third, so on and so forth. So, you know, sort of simple, but I think quite fun because of the interactiveness and the responsiveness as well. Okay. so. Let's now get into the actual live coding uh, of 
how this is created. Okay, so let's do the live code demo. So making a math visualization applet for exploring percentage using emojis. So first step is to import the necessary Python packages. Then we are going to select and store the code points for the chosen emojis in a dictionary. So as you saw from the demo, um, I've used and chosen to use a sports theme. So I'm going to call my dictionary sports items. So I'm using this football or soccer ball. Uh, if you're American, that's the code point. So it's formatting. Okay, I'm also using the basketball. So that's the code point there. So. And then tennis balls. Consistency and pool balls, or well, it's an eight ball technically. Okay, it's just oops, in the cell. Yeah. So now let's create um, the main function, which visualizes and makes calculations about the set of sports items. Um, and so the values passed to this function will be controlled by widgets created in the following steps. So let's create a function called physcalc function and We'll get past something called calculated item and some keyword args. All right, so first of all, we need to set up uh, that thing which basically uh, visualizes the the different sort of number of emojis chosen, as you saw in the demo. So this is the way I uh, created that. using a for loop and then a while loop nested inside it. Okay. Create variable bag n. Now some conditional statements, so it can generate calculations or um, messages to add items. Or well, obviously, that something's gone wrong. So okay. percentage.
Okay, so if there are items in the bag, then um, you can use the chosen item, which will have its percentage calculated, to make a percentage calculation, then print the total number of items in the bag, and then also print what percentage of the specific item chosen, um, the percentage that that represents in the bag. Okay. Now, if there are no items in the bag, then print this statement. And otherwise, some error message. And of course, we actually want to show the emojis. So using a list comprehension for that. There we go. So now let's create the widgets that will be used to determine the sports items that are part of the VizCalc function. So we're basically making an integer slider widget for each sports item, a dictionary, um, and then we'll set properties for each of those widgets. So let's do the football slider first. So that's the name. This is the widget. So the hint docs you should see various parameters. We'll set value equal to zero. Then zero max. We'll say ten. And then a description of the slider. So we'll do one for each. I'll do this um, in a more efficient way, but for visibility, we'll create each one individually. So the same, value equals zero, min equals zero, max equals oops, 10. And description. Okay, now I'm just going to copy this code because as you can see it's pretty repetitive. Tennis balls. Balls. Okay, let's just have a look. Let's check. Mm -mm. Okay, perfect. Now we'll use a slightly different widget for the sports item selection. Um, that will be used for the percentage calculation. So we're going to use, actually, in fact, toggle buttons for each sports item in the dictionary, and then we'll set the options and description properties. So I'm going to call my slider sports item selection. That is a toggle, toggle buttons because there'll be four of them. Again, various properties. 
So we'll set the options. And be consistent. description so again let's just check that that's working great okay now let's wrap everything into the final interact function to build the app that experience and it also is going to need a semicolon at the end um, just to repress some of the text bits. So widgets interact. So the function then the calculated item it needs. Going to be the value passed by the sports item selection. Sport items, I call it the sport items selection. Then the keyword arg, so footballs equals football slider, basketballs equals the basketball slider. Tennis balls equals no surprise the tennis ball slider. Oops. Let's set me on. Okay. So, so there we go. There is the final applet. So remember you choose different values. And you obviously you can render this in a, a voila um standalone app or otherwise. But obviously it still works fine in the notebook. And then let's do a slightly easier calculation. Basketballs 20%, 19%. Footballs three nine percent, and that is the live code demo. So now we've seen the Fibonacci fruit applet, the percentage applet, and the demo live coding demo of building the percentage applet. You know, I hope it's clear um, how secondary school maths concepts can definitely be brought to life um, using Jupyter Technologies. So, you know, to summarize this talk and to really, uh, really shoehorn the main takeaway, um, you know, the Jupyter ecosystem very much offers a range of open source educational resources that can be used to build visualization applets that could enable more effective math instruction at school. Um, and so, you know, for any educators and students or, you know, parents and other stakeholders, you know, I really encourage you to please take the opportunity where it might be feasible at all to benefit from these tools and access the valuable teaching and learning outcomes that are potentially on offer. And so that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening.